It's football. I've been watching it for 40 years. Are you kidding me? You're listening to Winning Cures Everything. Game day, baby. Wake up or get out. Here's your host. A confident young man. A superb athlete. Gary Seegers. Welcome in. It is Winning Cures Everything. It's the Wednesday, November 2nd edition of the show. I am your host, Gary Seegers. You can follow me, of course, on Twitter, at GaryWCE. Hopefully everybody's having a good week. Hopefully everybody has been hitting on some bets. We are going to uh, analyze 12 games today, and I'm going to give you my NFL best bets of the week at the end of the show. I uh, do want to start off by letting you know that the show is brought to you each and every time out by BetUS. It is America's premier online sportsbook, and you can find them, of course, at BetUS.com. I host the BetUS College Football Show every Tuesday and Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Make sure that you are subscribed over on that channel. We are getting closer to 11,000 subscribers, so we would hope that you would join us over there. Uh, start off each show uh, with just jumping into picks, typically. But in this situation, uh, we've swapped up the schedule a little bit, so I want to talk about the most watched games of last week and the numbers, right? These... I have always been a bit of a conspiracy theorist when it comes to these college football rankings and all that kind of stuff, right? And so the ratings tend to play into that a little bit. Uh, number one game of last week, Ohio State-Penn State, 8.3 million people watched that one on Fox. It was the big noon kick. Florida-Georgia was number two on CBS, 5.62 million. Number three was Michigan State and Michigan on ABC. That was the primetime window, 5.58 million. You got three ball games last week that hit over 5 million people. Uh, Kentucky, Tennessee hit 4 million. That was number four on ESPN primetime. Oklahoma State, Kansas State on Fox in the afternoon hit 3.4 million. Illinois, Nebraska, which was just a hideous football game, did 2.5 million people on ABC in the middle of the day. And then Notre Dame, Syracuse, which was the ABC morning game, uh, had 2.3 million people. That's crazy. The, the numbers for college football are up significantly this year, and you love to see it. You absolutely love to see it. So we've got a lot of things to dive into. Uh, as I mentioned, of course, the BetUS College Football Show, going over to BetUS. And now I would ask that you do me a favor and go ahead and like the video, if you would so kindly, and make sure that you are subscribed to this channel. We hit 7,500 last week. I would like to keep that thing growing. I would certainly like to keep that growing. Haven't figured out exactly what the next goal is. I guess 8,000. Uh, but we would like to get there fairly soon uh, as the season continues on. All right, let's dive into it. Let's talk about what's actually going on in these games that were not discussed on the Bet U.S. College Football Show. This is the against the spread pick em for quote-unquote under-the-radar games for week number 10. Uh, I am 54 and 54 in these picks so far on the season. I went six and six last week, so continuing across the 500 scale there, these are not the games that I want to pick, right? My best bets are over on the Bet US College Football Show. I am 36, 20, and two over there. So if you would like to go over there and find the best bets, I highly recommend that you do so. But in these games, I just look at the numbers and I tell you what I think about the matchup, right? That's the the best way that we go about this. So let's go ahead and uh, and fire into it, and we will start off with a little music. There we go. Toss it on in the background. Game number one. Iowa at Purdue. Now, Purdue is a four-and-a-half-point favorite, total of 41 currently over at BetUS. It's a 12 p.m. Eastern time game on FS1. And I look at this, and I... I gotta tell you, I don't I don't know much about Iowa's offense. I just I don't see how how they were able to do anything against Northwestern even, and that's a bad defense. And yet they they found ways to be okay, right? Not bad. Uh, the defense has been pretty good. Uh, one thing to notice here: 110 in rushing success rate, um, which is surprising for this Iowa defense, right? The, uh, the Iowa offense, I mean, it's in the hundreds in basically everything. I mean, it's just not a not a great team 
um, as far as the offense is concerned. Uh, you can look at basics over here, number 108 in offensive PPA per drive. Uh, this Purdue defense was good early, and thus far, uh, not not great. These uh, stats, by the way, are over the last five weeks, so the most recent numbers. I've got Purdue favored by 5.15. Um, I don't... We're going to have some weather situations in this ballgame, right? It's supposed to be rain, a lot of wind. That's going to hurt Purdue more uh, because if you look at what they do on offense, uh, Purdue throws the ball, you know, over 57% of the time. Just something to pay attention to with this. Uh, you look at, you know, PPA per pass, it's pretty good. But when it comes to actually having to run the football, uh, number 82 PPA per rush for Purdue's offense that isn't necessarily going to get it done for them. So I, there's not a lot of stats to really break down with this, uh, knowing that a big portion of Purdue's offense is going to be taken out of this game. I'm going to ride Iowa here, plus the four and a half. I just think that having the weather situation is going to hurt, and, of course, the fact that Iowa is fantastic on defense. Really, really good. I don't think I was going to be able to score much, but... I mean, that doesn't uh, that doesn't change a whole lot for me as far as the spread is concerned. Uh, this handicap has to do everything with weather and Iowa's defense, and so, so yeah, give me give me the Hawkeyes here. Got a scratch on my nose. I'm telling you, I'm dying here, dying. <laughs> so give me Iowa plus four and a half on this one. Um, I think the weather is going to affect Purdue much more than it will affect Iowa. I think Iowa would welcome just having to run the football. That's the way that I'm looking at it. So, moving along, we have got Maryland at Wisconsin. And Wisconsin, a five-point favorite in this one. We're going to pull it up on the screen here. Um, Wisconsin minus five. The total is 50. 12 p.m. Eastern time on the Big Ten Network. And I, of course, Talia Tongavaloa is going to be back in this game. So, that certainly helps. I think the most surprising thing for me has been Maryland's defense. Um, and no, they're not like fantastic, right? They're not great against the pass, but obviously it's not like Wisconsin throws the ball very much at all. They throw the ball uh, 43.94% of the time. But I look at what they're able to do overall, which is number 70 in defense per drive. And I think that... Uh, that's going to be enough in this situation because I think Wisconsin is just as likely to stop themselves as they are to um, to be stopped. I guess <laughs> the offensive success rate for Wisconsin number one hundred two in passing success rate, number eighty three in rushing success rate. Overall, they're actually number fifty three in success rate on um, uh, so far on the season. So. Uh, but looking at these numbers, of course, these are over the last five weeks. Uh, Wisconsin's defense is great against the rush, not great against the pass. I know that this passing success rate is number 119 for Maryland. But again, that's over the last few weeks, and that's without uh, that's without Tonga Valoa in the match or in the uh, in the ball games. So I will take Maryland here because I think they're the more efficient team when you look at um, when you look at my numbers on this. I've got Maryland actually favored by five based on the last, you know, five weeks of data. I I think when I look at turnover margin, when I look at everything else, you know, which team is more likely to give the ball away? Well, that would be Wisconsin at number 73 giveaways per game. Um, Maryland is number 18 in that spot. Uh, penalties per game, both of these are in the, you know, bottom 30. Uh, so penalties could end up hurting both of them pretty significantly. I think that Wisconsin has some issues in their secondary that I think that Maryland can take advantage of. So I will take Maryland plus the five on the road in Madison, which never would have imagined that I would have said that. But uh, Maryland's defense has been good enough and, you know, it is what it is. So give me give me Maryland to keep this thing close. Moving along, we've got Kentucky at Missouri. Missouri, a two-point home underdog and the total sits at 41 and a half. It's 12 p.m. Eastern time on SEC Network. Those numbers latest at BetUS. And 
Of course, there's my number on it. Kentucky by 3.62 based on the last, you know, four or five weeks of data. And I, I look at this in Missouri has been like their last week against South Carolina was the best game that they have played offensively, right? And they've been pretty good on defense anyway. If you scroll down, you look at Missouri's defensive numbers, number 38 PPA per pass, number 74 PPA per rush, but they're number 23 in rushing success rate allowed. Uh, so teams can break off, you know, big runs against them. As you see, they're number 124 in rushing explosiveness. The issue for Kentucky is they're not a really explosive rushing offense. This Kentucky offensive line is not great, right? Uh, so something to pay attention to with this, you know, points per scoring opportunity over the last few weeks, Kentucky's number 122, and Missouri's defense is number 10. That's a huge discrepancy. One team cannot finish drives, and the other one uh, doesn't allow people to finish drives. So that's definitely not good for Kentucky in this spot. Um, what I look at here is I think Kentucky's got a significantly stronger roster than what Missouri has. I, I know that they haven't played great, but when you consider who they've actually played against, uh, yeah, it's going to skew those numbers a little bit. I think Kentucky is definitely better than Missouri, even on the road. So so in this spot, uh, when it comes to turnovers and everything else, I mean, it's kind of a wash. Penalties per game it certainly leads towards Kentucky in this spot. Uh, but I will I will take Kentucky to have a bounce back here because they, they got flat out embarrassed by Tennessee last week. I don't think it's going to happen again. I think give me Kentucky to uh, cover the spot. Minus two on that one. We move ahead. Florida at Texas A&M. And I do want to go ahead and pull this one up on the sheet. Uh, Texas A&M favored by three. Total of 55.5 on it. So 55 and a half over at BetUS. 12 p.m. Eastern time. It's on ESPN. Of course it is because it's massive, massive brands. But let's go on and pull up the uh, the sheet here and take a look at, at what we're doing. My numbers have Florida favored by 2.3 over the past five weeks. And I'm a little shocked at that. I don't think the rosters are all that different. Uh, yeah, Florida has some issues. Obviously, they dismissed Brenton Cox. And while that's a massive talent that's gone, sometimes that can actually rejuvenate a, uh, a locker room. Right, you get rid of the guys that don't want to be there. Any kind of negative energy, whatever it is, and and it can help. Uh, you look at the defense for Florida; it's not great, but that offense for A and M has not been great either. They certainly showed much better against Ole Miss last week than they had in recent weeks before that. Connor Wigman looks like a real dude, but um, but still got problems. You know, they can't really run the ball. Uh, they're number thirty nine in rushing success rate, but they're number ninety in PPA per rush. They can't finish drives um it it's really crazy to look at uh although i will tell you this they have finished some drives they've got uh at number 32 in scoring opportunities per game uh and they're number 44 in uh points per scoring opportunity so they've been able to finish recently but they just uh, number 90 in ppa per rush number 91 in ppa per pass uh, this is not a great offense again they scored 28 points last week uh, they still have not broken 30 against an FBS team since playing South Carolina last October. So, something to look at here. Uh, Florida's defense is certainly one that you could get one over on. Uh, Florida's defense, number 108 in PPA per drive on defense. Uh, offense is number 50 in PPA per drive, even though they're not you know super successful. Uh, they're number 92 in passing success rate, but number 71 in PPA per pass. Florida's offense is number five in PPA per rush, but they are number 111 in rushing success rate. Now, you can run on AM's defense, and the biggest discrepancy here is rushing explosiveness. Florida, number one in that metric in the country over the last five weeks. Texas A&M's defense, number 117. They allow explosive plays through the running game. Uh, Florida could certainly take advantage of that. So, I, I look at this, you know, standard down success rate. Florida's not great. Uh, but they are pretty good as far as the PPA is concerned. Like, it, it just huge splits when it comes to this. So, you want to talk about a game with high, high variance? Yeah, any game that's got Anthony Richardson at quarterback is going to be high variance. Uh, if I've got a high variance game, 
yeah, you better believe I'm going to take Florida in that spot. I will take the underdog, especially if I'm getting a field goal. Give me Florida because any play could be the deciding play. So I will absolutely take that. Uh, give me the Gators plus the three in this spot. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and hit one of these. On the back side, we got Baylor in Oklahoma, UCF Memphis, etc. Let's check out some things you should know about. College football is back, and Bet US TV has you covered. Every Tuesday and Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, we've got expert game analysis to help you make informed decisions before kickoff, only on the Bet US TV College Football Channel. Visit winningcureseverything.com to find everything you need to know about us, including full shows in video or podcast form, gambling picks, merch, the gear we use, and more. If you want more content from me, Gary, visit betustv.com. I host the How to Gamble on Sports show and, from August through January, the BetUS College Football Show. You can subscribe to both on YouTube. If you haven't already, subscribe to the podcast on Apple, Spotify, or whatever's your favorite podcast app. And if your app allows it, leave a five-star written review. Visit the Winning Cures Everything web store to get all kinds of football shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and more. Visit winningcureseverything.com slash store to see what all we've added. And now, back to the show. Let me uh, go ahead and tell everybody, make sure that you enter into the picks contest. Um, that is over at winningcureseverything.com. Click on the contest page. It's going to take you to the link where you sign up and you enter in your picks for the week. Our pick em contest, the winner gets a $25 Amazon gift card. For those that have won and have not responded uh, to the email that I have sent you, uh, please send me an email so that I can get you your gift card. <laughs> <laughs> truth, truth, truth. Uh, I, I will try my best to get those out. Uh, the show is also brought to you by Valtimary Surf Company. Fantastic clothing apparel line. Go and check them out. You can use the promo code Gary10. That's G A R Y 1 0. And they will hook you up with 10% off of your order. But uh, it's basically college town shirts uh, in the vein of basically the beach life. And I have two of them. The material is fantastic. The fabric, super soft. Go and check them out. I like the designs personally. Uh, that's why we paired up with them. So go ahead and check them out. ValtimarySurfCo.com. And of course, uh, there's a link in the description. So go and check that out. So enter the contest and go to Valtimary Surf Co. Game number five here. Uh, and we are going to go with Baylor at Oklahoma. Pull it up on the screen. And let's see. Oklahoma is a three and a half point favorite. Total is 61 and a half over at BetUS. It's 3 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN+. Plus. This is over the last five weeks, of course. I've got Oklahoma favored by .36. Now, this does entail uh, all of the, the mess, right? When Dylan Gabriel was not in the game and everything else. Now, this team is significantly better when Gabriel is in but I look at what Baylor is, and obviously they had their quarterback go out for a little bit too, shaping his back, everything should be fine. I think that Baylor, I think Dave Aranda knows what he's doing against a Jeff Levy type of offense. I think that his defenses understand how to confuse them. Uh, I, think, I think I'm going to ride with Baylor here. Uh, you look at some of the numbers, you know, turnover margin. Not great for Baylor. They're number 86 in giveaways per game, so obviously you hope that they don't uh, hurt themselves here. But penalties per game? Yeah, I'll, I'll take Baylor in that spot. They're number 18. Oklahoma's number 52. Uh, you know, I, I, I see both of these teams like to play fast. Uh, number five in plays per game uh, for Oklahoma. Number seven in plays per game on offense for Baylor. I, I, I expect a lot of plays. I expect uh, some points here, certainly. Uh, but th these are the kind of games why Baylor decided to roll with Blake Shapin instead of Bohannon, right? He's got a little more vertical downfield threat uh, with an arm. And and I think, looking at what they're actually doing on offense, I mean, number 29 PPA per pass, uh, they're number 37 in rushing success rate. Like, they have success on offense. I They don't throw it a lot, but when they do, they can be explosive. Uh, but moreover... 
like they just they're successful with it. number twelve in passing success rate. I don't like Oklahoma's defense. I, give me Baylor. Give me Baylor in the spot. Baylor plus three and a half is the way that we are going to roll there. Moving along to the AAC, and UCF travels to the Simmons Bank Liberty Bowl uh, Stadium, Liberty Bowl Stadium in Memphis, and Memphis is a three and a half point home dog. Uh, still no real update on Plumley, I believe the quarterback for UCF. But I will tell you this: I think that uh, I think Keen is is pretty good at quarterback. I think that team is going to be just fine. It's three thirty p.m. Eastern time on ESPN two. Let's pull up the numbers here, and I've got UCF favored by eight and a half, roundabout. Um, not not super surprising, I don't think, just based on uh, the last few weeks. Uh, UCF, of course, a massive win over Cincinnati just last week. This could be a weird sandwich spot for UCF, though. And I think that's why the line's coming down. Along with the quarterback news, uh, or lack thereof, you've also got UCF playing against Tulane next week. And that is uh, maybe a precursor to the AAC championship game, or uh, somebody could get knocked out of the AAC championship game in that spot. So, uh, looking at the numbers, UCF's defense against the pass uh, definitely took a blow last week against Cincinnati. That's all Cincy could do. But they certainly were able to stop the run. Memphis's offense, number 90 PPA per pass, number 96 PPA per rush, those ain't good. Those are not good at all. Uh, while the UCF offense has definitely stepped up quite a bit, I mean, you look at what they're doing, especially on the ground. I mean, they are, they are really, really good there. Um, they're, not, they're not great on offense, uh, excuse me, on defense right now because of the Cincinnati game, I believe. Uh, that and the ECU game. I mean, they just gave up a ton of yards to Holt Nailers and, and whatnot. I I don't know that Memphis can fully take advantage of UCF, even if they are uh, beat up. But again, we have seen UCF in a look-ahead spot, right? We saw it against ECU. They were looking ahead to that Cincinnati game. They took the loss to ECU. Now they came back. They beat Cincinnati even without Plumlee. I have to believe that even if they don't play their A game, they will still be able to get a cover here. I know it's Memphis's homecoming, et cetera, uh, but give me give me UCF minus the three and a half. I think the talent gap is too large right now. I think uh, UCF just, you know, UCF has their eye on the prize, which is an AAC championship game uh, or an AAC championship before they head off to the Big 12. So I will I will certainly roll with the Knights on that one. Next game up, we have got Oklahoma State headed to Kansas, and the Jayhawks, a two-point home dog that has come down from three and a half down to two already. Total sits at 64 and a half over at BetUS, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time on FS1. And let's pull up the numbers here so you can see what I'm looking at. The reason it has come down is because the analytics would tell you that Kansas should be able to keep this game close, especially at home. You want to talk about some statisticians. Good gracious. Uh, some schemesters, if you will. The guys calling plays at Kansas are so good at scheming up plays, finding ways to to get guys open and into space, etc. And they have got enough talent to be able to hang around. That's it's super surprising to me. And I love what Kansas is doing, right? They're number 20 in PPA per pass on offense, even though they only throw the ball 45% of the time. Um, I, I look at, you know, what they're doing running the ball. It hasn't been great as of late. But my goodness, Oklahoma State, they can't stop the pass. They're getting worse against the run. And they got a bunch of guys beat up. And they have been. And I know that there were a bunch of Kansas State fans that jumped on here last week after I gave my, my recap and reaction uh, that thought I was making excuses. I'm not making excuses. Kansas State still just whipped them. But Oklahoma State here, like I, I don't know who all is going to be on the field. I don't know who's going to show up. I don't know if Spencer Sanders is, is going to be 100%. Like, there's just a lot of questions here. And when I look at that compared to Kansas, yeah, there's obviously issues, um, but I you you look at all these different stats, and I just kind of throw them out the window. 
Because I think Oklahoma State got embarrassed last week, and I don't think that's going to happen again. I think Gundy is going to have those guys bounce back. He did mention after the press conference, uh, not after the press, excuse me, he did mention in the press conference after the game that he did something different in practice the week prior and that he will never do it again. I expect Oklahoma State to bounce back. I expect them to get this win, and I think it will be by more than two points. I will take Oklahoma State to cover, even though my number says differently. Uh, Give me the pokes. Give me the pokes minus the two. Uh, Let's move to Liberty at Arkansas. And this one's a fun one. Liberty heads to Reynolds Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville to take on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Arkansas, a 13.5 point favorite. Total of 63 over at BetUS. And of course, this is 4 p.m. Eastern Time on the SEC Network. Gentlemen, ladies, uh, I'm going to surprise you with something here. I have Arkansas favored by about five and a half points, which shocked me considering the uh, difference in roster strength, uh, the difference in strength of schedule, all of that, because all of that is tossed into the number. Arkansas's defense could end up having some problems with Hugh Freeze. And if Hugh Freeze wants to get the Auburn job, this would be a good spot to maybe uh, toss his name in there, right? Uh, This seems to me to be the best way to get your name at the forefront of a bunch of those guys. You want to get back into the SEC, you go into Arkansas and find a way to uh, hang around in a game there. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, Liberty's pass defense... Pretty good. Pretty good. Number tw- uh, 22 in PPA per pass, number 13 in passing success rate. Um, but they they play against it a ton. 57% of the plays that they defend are passes. Uh, Arkansas does not throw it much, but they are pretty good throwing the football, especially over the last five weeks. You see here number two in PPA per pass, etc. Arkansas runs the ball nearly 60% of the time. I mean, just a, a huge, huge number here. Um but they're not great. Like, as far as scoring by running the ball, uh, number 67 PPA per rush. They are number 29 in rushing success rate, but Liberty's defense is number 10. Liberty's defense, very underrated. They are number 19 in PPA per drive on defense over the last five weeks. They are uh, doing really, really well in that regard. Now, you move over to the other side. And Arkansas's defense, a little bit of a dumpster fire. They don't have the roster with the pieces that Barry Odom had in his first couple of years there. And so it's changed up the way that they're having to play. And, of course, they had a bunch of injuries early in the season, a bunch of guys out for the year. Liberty, Hugh Freeze can can draw them up. It doesn't matter who's playing quarterback. Right now, I believe it's Bennett, who's the third-string guy, who just had a monster day against BYU, who does not have a good defense. Turns out Arkansas doesn't have a good defense either. So you're telling me that passing the football... Arkansas's defense has a lot of trouble. That secondary, number 103 PPA per pass, number 105 in passing explosiveness allowed. You look at Liberty's offense, number 42 PPA per pass, number 8 in passing explosiveness. Look at their rushing explosiveness. Liberty, number 21 in that spot. Arkansas's defense, number 109. Liberty can find ways to scheme guys open, and they can find ways to score. Now, I would imagine that Arkansas is going to be able to do the same thing, but this surprised me when I started looking at the numbers. I know it's a, it's a big spread, and I know that Liberty just did this by going to Ole Miss last year, and they kind of tricked everybody, and, and Ole Miss was just able to outlast them uh, and get a, a cover. But I I think Liberty hangs around in this ballgame. I think they were able to score on Arkansas. Uh, I think they're going to make it ar- harder for Arkansas to score on them. And this is a bit of a sandwich spot. Arkansas has got LSU next week. So give me give me the Liberty, plus uh, <laughs> I know that sounds sounds interesting, right? Give me Liberty, uh, but yes, give me Liberty plus thirteen and a half to get the cover here. Uh, on the other side, we are going to hit Texas at Kansas State. So uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and hit this thing and run into the Longhorns game. Let's check out some things you should know about. Follow the show on Twitter at Winning Cures, and you can follow Gary at Gary W C E. You can also follow on Facebook. Got your own podcast or web show? Looking to start one? Or you're just curious how we look and sound so good? Well, we've got all the gear that we use listed on our gear page on the website. If you order using our links, you'll be supporting the show too. 
subscribe on YouTube to get not only full Winning Cures Everything shows, but individual segments and other goodies as well. We're over 6,000 subscribers, and our goal by the end of the year is 7,500. If you're interested in advertising on a show that reaches over 80,000 unique football fans per month during the season, send an email to Gary at winningcureseverything.com, and we'll put together a plan that best fits you or your business. And now, back to the show. All right, let's get back into it. Texas at Kansas State. Yeah, hold up. Hold up. Do me a favor and go ahead and like the video while you're watching. It's a thumbs up. It looks like that. It's very simple to do. Help me out. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already. And uh, and share the show out. Tell your friends about it. All that good stuff. Uh, along with that, make sure that you enter the contest, the Pick'em Contest, over at winningcureseverything.com. There's a little tab at the top that says Contest. You click on that very easy. There's also a link in the description. That's the best way to go about it. Uh, these lines, of course, all of them brought to you by BetUS. Let's get back into it. Let's do this thing. Texas at Kansas State. And write down my time here. But, yeah, Texas at Kansas State. Kansas State, a two-and-a-half-point home dog in this one. Um, kind of surprising, especially with the way that they just beat the doors off of Oklahoma State last week. But... Uh, the line is what it is. Of course, the talent is there, etc. cetera. Uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time on FS1, so it's a night game in the Little Apple. And I got to tell you, uh, I look at these numbers, and I was a little shocked. A big part of this has to do with roster strength, etc. I want to see what Quinn Ewers does on the road here. Um, I'm sure that Texas was embarrassed by losing to Oklahoma State and then watching Oklahoma State go out and uh, get trounced by this same team. But my number says one thing, and my head says something else. Kansas State is really good at throwing the football, it looks like, right? Especially lately. This is over the past five weeks, these numbers are. And I see number six in PPA per pass. I see number 34 in passing success rate, number three in excuse me, passing explosiveness. And what I see is that they only throw the ball 43.9% uh, of the time in the past five weeks. They don't do it often. Uh, they're able to run the ball really successfully. Um, but they, you know, it hasn't been great over the past however many weeks. They're super explosive. They're number 109 in success rate, excuse me, is Kansas State. But number 55 in PPA per rush, number 5 in rushing explosiveness. You saw Deuce Vaughn go crazy on some long runs. Uh, Texas' defense is pretty good here. You know, number 25 in offensive line yards allowed, number 27 in PPA per rush. Uh, they've got athletes. they got dudes. Uh, they're pretty good against the explosive play. And when you flip it back down and look at the offense here, I, I can see ways that Texas can exploit Kansas State's defense. So uh, Texas's offense does not allow Havoc at all. They're number six in Havoc rate allowed. They're number 30 in PPA per pass. They're not super explosive, but they are number 29 in explosive play rate uh, as far as their passing offense is concerned. And Kansas State's defense is number 81. So you can get them over the top there. I think the biggest thing here is can you lull in Kansas State's offense? Standard downs rate, uh, standard downs PPA, excuse me, Texas is number 21, and Kansas State's defense is number 49. So if Texas can get some of those eh, second and short, third and short, whatever it is, you can take some chances there, and I think they can find ways to to win this ball game. And if they're going to win the ball game, then I would expect them to cover two and a half, even on the road. I will take Texas here, and I feel ridiculous for doing that because I just saw them on the road against a team that they probably should have beaten, and... And they weren't able to do it. So, I'm going to go back to the well. I trust Quinn Ewers. I trust that team. I think they're going to be able to get this thing turned around and win some of these games that maybe they're not supposed to, which I know that they're favored in the spot, but regardless. Uh, I like Texas here. I'll, I'll take them again. Texas minus 2.5 is my play on that one. Moving along to the SEC. Auburn at Mississippi State. Mississippi State is a 13-point favorite at home in Starkville. 51.5 is the total over at BetUS in this one. Uh, 
a 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time game on ESPN2. Let's go ahead and pull up the numbers here. And, whoo, uh, I've got Mississippi State minus 14.4 in this spot. Very interesting. Auburn's defense is pretty good against the pass. However, you look at how often they're having to face the pass. Only 34% of the time because they are putrid against the run. Number 124 PPA per rush on defense. Number 127 in rushing success rate allowed. And teams are running against them over 65% of the time. Mississippi State's actually pretty good at running the football. They're number 19 PPA per rush, number 19 success rate, but they're only running the ball 32% of the time. I would expect that they are probably going to try a little more at running the football this week if they are able to have any kind of an advantage in that spot. Uh, you look at the defense here for Mississippi State, and I know Harson was just fired. Maybe this is a dead cap bounce kind of thing. Cadillac Williams is going to be the interim coach. What we've seen from Auburn may not be what we get, right? That's certainly something to pay attention to. But, you know, are there any? is there anybody at Mississippi State as far as the players on the field that cares anything about John Cohen leaving state to go to Auburn? If so, you use that for a little extra motivation. The game is in Starkville, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You look at state's defense, and the explosive play is where Auburn can find a way to get them. Uh, Auburn is not great at, at really anything, but I will tell you what they what they are pretty good at. Rushing explosiveness on offense for Auburn, number 25, in Mississippi State, number 79 in that spot. Passing explosiveness. Auburn's offense is number 27 in that spot, and Mississippi State's defense is number 127. You can find holes in that defense, and you can find big plays, and I think that's what Robbie Ashford and Bunch are going to have to rely on, is finding the big plays because they aren't super successful doing anything else. Right? You look at the uh, overall offensive success rate for Auburn, and it's number 110. Um, you look at defensive success rate for Mississippi State, and it's number 62. So I, I would expect... We're going to see Mississippi State keep the ball a little longer, try and run the ball, some short passes, et cetera. Uh, and Auburn is just going to have to hit big plays. It's kind of exactly what they did against Ole Miss, where they hit these monster plays and were able to score off of them. I don't think it's going to be enough this week. I, I don't think that Eric Esau is there to try and uh, scheme some of this stuff. I, I think this offense is going to have some problems, uh, which they've already had problems, but I think they're going to have even more than they already had I believe that I'm going to ride with Mississippi State this week. I know this line has crawled up significantly, but I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to take State to cover the 13 here. It's under two touchdowns. My line is closer to 15 than it is to 13. Uh, yeah, give me give me Mississippi State here. I think when they play at home, they are a different beast. I'll just I'll say that. We're going to stay in the SEC. South Carolina heads to Nashville to take on the Vanderbilt Commodores. Vanderbilt, a seven-point home dog. The total sits at 48.5 at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time on the SEC Network. Uh, I may have said Auburn, Mississippi State was on the SEC Network. It's on ESPN, too. Uh, this one, South Carolina Vandy is on the SEC Network. Let's go ahead and pull up the numbers here. And whew, my numbers are way, way, way off. A lot of that has to do with roster strength. I put that into my numbers uh, a little more than some other people do. Uh, but it's also based a lot on who you've played, how you've played, efficiency, etc. South Carolina's defense, even though Missouri was pretty successful against them last week, South Carolina's defense is still number 30 in PPA per drive over the last five weeks. This team is pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, Vandy, I believe, getting A.J. Swan back, uh, all that good stuff. But it, regardless, Vanderbilt number 131 in PPA margin over the past five weeks. At South Carolina number 50 right there. I mean, that's just that's huge. Absolutely huge. Uh, Vandy's defense, number 122. Vandy's offense is number 118. Vanderbilt does not do very many things well at all. Uh, a lot of people trying to play the, uh, the game where you – talk about what one team did against somebody versus another team. Vanderbilt stayed within three against Missouri, and Missouri went on the road and beat South Carolina by two touchdowns. It ain't the same. It's just not the same. 
uh, totally different situations, et cetera. I think that South Carolina is just significantly more talented here. They have been significantly more efficient. I I really like uh, South Carolina in this spot. I think that the offense is going to be able to have uh, a bit of a field day on this passing defense. I think this is a Spencer Rattler get right game. No, he's not been great, um, but in this spot, you know, their passing success rate is number 65. Vandy's pass defense is number 131 in passing success rate allowed. Uh, PPA per pass, number 130 is Vandy's defense. Uh, South Carolina's offense, number 58. I, I can see where they would try and do quite a bit here. Um, and, you know, whether Marshawn Lloyd plays or not, I do think that the running game is going to be pretty successful against Vandy's defense. Uh, this just looks like a a massive get-right spot for South Carolina, and I think they've got a significantly better roster. So give me the Gamecocks to cover the seven here. I, I think I think this team is much better than Vanderbilt, and that's nothing against Clark Lee's team. I just think in this spot, South Carolina coming off of an embarrassing home loss where you lost your top 25 ranking, yeah, you're going to want to take it out on somebody and – I mean, there's nobody better in the SEC to do that to than, than Vanderbilt, even on the road. Last game we're going to hit for today. Uh, and, of course, I'm going to give you my NFL picks, so don't worry. Those are very, very quick. Wake Forest heads to NC State. And, you know, Raleigh, I would imagine, would be jumping, but this team has not looked right since Devin Leary went down. But, of course, they bring in the third-string quarterback, and he looks pretty good. This one's uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time on the ACC Network. NC State, a four-and-a-half-point home dog. Uh, total of 54 and a half, latest numbers at BetUS. We'll pop up the numbers on the screen, and I've got Wake Forest favored by 5.58 here. Uh, this NC State offense, number 102 PPA per drive, uh, they looked better once they got that kid in there, but how does that actually look against Wake Forest, right? How does that look against a pretty decent Demon Deacon uh, defense? Demon Deacon defense, boy, that's something, isn't it? Uh, Demon Deacon defense is uh, number 57 in PPA per drive. They're number 62 in PPA per play on defense. Um, And they're number 69 in defensive success rate overall. I I don't foresee NC State being able to do a whole lot offensively against this team. And on the other side, you look at Wake Forest offense, number 20 in offensive success rate. I know that they turned the ball over just an absolute ton last week. I don't think that that is something that will continue to haunt them. Uh, although it did drop them down in turnover margin to number 72. They're number 100 in giveaways per game now because of that one. But uh, but regardless, uh, I do think that NC State, you know, they'll be able to hang around in this game. They'll be able to find some plays, some holes in that defense. But my biggest thing is this Wake Forest offense against this NC State defense. And the defense for NC State has not been as good lately, uh, especially against the pass. And I think that that kind of concerns you a little bit, right? Now, do they spruce up because the offense may be able to uh, do something now? Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm very curious about it. Uh, if you look at standard down PPA, you know, uh, standard down success rate, et cetera, Wake Forest offense, really good against uh, a really good NC State defense. Uh, you look at passing down, you know, once you get in third and long, et cetera, Wake Forest significantly more success than NC State. I think until I see the kid do something for NC State, I'm going to have to ride with Wake Forest. Uh, this team was rudderless for a little while, NC State was. Uh, so I will take Wake Forest to come back off of an embarrassing performance and find a way to cover the four and a half here. Let's see. Let's go ahead and uh, and I will give you my NFL Super Contest picks, and then we're going to get out of here. Uh, I went three and two last week. This is week number ten. Excuse me, week number nine. NFL Super Contest picks. Uh, went three and two last week. I'm twenty and twenty overall in my NFL picks. Uh, I don't give you a full breakdown. I just tell you what they are. So I'll go ahead and read them off to you. I'm taking the Jets plus fourteen against the Bills this week. I'm taking the Seahawks plus one against the Cardinals. Give me the Titans plus thirteen and a half against the Chiefs. The Falcons, plus three against the Chargers, and I like the Patriots to cover six against the Colts. That's the way we're going to roll with it. All right. The show, of course, brought to you by BetUS. It's America's premier online sports book. They are, in fact, where the game begins. I host the BetUS College Football Show, and we got this thing done in under 45 minutes this week. 
not too shabby. All right, let's go ahead and get out of here. Uh, with that said, you guys go and subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe. And take care of yourself, take care of each other, and hopefully all your tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.